showcase local business owners, career professionals, and up-and-coming artists. We share their stories in hopes of inspiring people, sharing knowledge, and ultimately helping give exposure to them. <laughs> if you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button. It helps us a lot and you'll never miss an episode. Today, we are here with Maya, as you guys can see. Hello. <laughs> she is the owner, founder, main baker of Mima's Cuban Kitchen, a private cater catering business. Mm -hmm. And before we actually get into the questions, make sure you tune in at the end. We're going to be showcasing and sampling some of her most requested desserts. Definitely what we're excited for. <laughs> <laughs> so True. Maya, tell us a little bit about yourself. So um, yeah, my name is Maya Campo. Um, I'm about to be 27 years old. Um, I am. I grew up in the San Fernando Valley, and I graduated from UC Merced back in 2015. And right out of college, or I was a student athlete at UC Merced, and I had like a big sports background. But in my free time, I would bake. So I didn't take it seriously back then. It was just kind of something I I did for fun. But yeah, so right after college, I moved back home, and I got into teaching. Um, did that for a few years and decided that baking is what made me happiest. So I decided to finally pursue baking in 2019 and fast forward to 2021 and yep. I'm here with we're our business. Here now. We're here. So for everyone out there that is not familiar, what is Mima's Cuban Kitchen and how did that come about? So, Mima's Cuban Kitchen is essentially a kitchen <laughs> that is Cuban. Um, I wanted to leave it very open-ended because my company is constantly changing, um, constantly adapting to what my customers want because my main goal is customer service and, you know, my customer because I'm not baking for me to eat my food. Yeah. I'm baking for people to eat my food. So essentially it is authentic home cooking that is Cuban and American. So Cuban American desserts. Um, this, like I had mentioned earlier, it stemmed from just my hobby for baking. Um, yeah, the love for doing it. Love for doing it. Have you had to register your business and did you have to get into licensing and all of that? Yeah, so when I first started off back in 2019, I just had the idea and the passion. I knew I loved baking, and people told me they liked my desserts. So that's where I started off with. And then my next step from that was finding a name that was available. Because you can have these good ideas, but you still need to check if, if someone else could have taken your good idea yeah. already. Yeah. So you need to switch it around a little bit. So yeah, um, I went to the Van Nuys court the house? yeah, Van Nuys yeah. courthouse um waited in line for like 30 minutes with my application that said Mima's Cuban Kitchen it got approved and that is my name and I have to renew it almost I think every five years or so how much does that cost it does not cost oh it's, really you just own the name I might have paid a small fee in the beginning it was years ago I don't yeah. recall but I'm not like paying anything to renew it and what a 
So you just registered your name and then did you get other licensing or so if if I ever do events that are larger and they you do ask to for licensing, them. I have to do my baking through an approved kitchen um, mm. that is licensed. If I do events out of private events, if I do yeah. events at farmers markets, it's the licensing through that through them. Every company is different, different licensing, different regulations and codes. Okay. So for now, you just had to, you know, register your name. Before. Yeah, correct. I just have my fictitious name. Uh, there's no LLC attached yet. Um, that's when I get my, when I'm up to my next, next level. Yes. Yeah. That comes along with when you want to go and start doing like a website for yourself okay. and whatnot. Yeah. It's like the next level, next tier. Yeah. Okay. I know you're working from home, mm -hmm. but have you had to have a lot of startup costs? Um, so initially, when I started in 2019, I I did it for about eight months, and then the costs of the products that I needed to buy, oh, okay. the materials, they were catching up to me because then I needed to start buying like business cards. All of the expenses were adding up. Yeah. So. That's when I stopped because my business, my, my, what is it called? Um, the supply and demand wasn't balanced for me. Like, so you weren't getting your return on investment. <laughs> correct. Basically. Like I wasn't making yeah. enough money to be, to keep people. investing into yeah. it and putting yeah. more and yeah. more. Into because it. I was just starting off. Like I needed to buy certain pans that I didn't have yeah. when I, at first, like certain people, like now I do tres leches, but when I first started, I didn't have the stuff to, to even do bake, those. yeah, like yeah. certain things. So it's been a process throughout the years of me, you know, when I do get certain gigs, that that gig, the money made from that gig is literally it reinvested into, into, okay, I need that pan. Okay, I need this thing <clears throat> so I can expand my menu. I can make yeah. certain things because every dessert requires different, different, yeah. Yeah. different equipment. Yeah. So at first it was, digging a hole in my pocket but if you care about some, something enough it's not really a hole it's yeah. an investment yeah so i was investing in 2019 let's phrase it that way <laughs> and then i had to take a break because i had just quit teaching and yeah. i wasn't able to fund my own business anymore mm -hmm. so in that break um i was pursuing other things that weren't baking related that weren't teaching related but because I had established my baking business, people remembered who I was. And I started getting, when the pandemic hit, people were like, hey, do you still bake? And that's kind of where I'm at now because people remembered, oh, Maya bakes, Maya has a baking business. So I'm literally riding the wave of the demand yeah. of okay. desserts right yeah. now, of Cuban desserts, because yeah. I think you can get a cookie anywhere. You can go to the yeah. drive five minutes and get a cookie. So the demand for Cuban desserts is getting popular, which is pretty cool. Yeah. So I'm riding the Cuban wave. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. going with it. I yeah. mean, smart. Mm -hmm. no. Yeah. That actually segues into the next question. When you said people, there's a demand for your desserts, right? Mm -hmm. And since 2019, how did you market? And what were some of the marketing strategies that you focused on as a startup so as a startup it was literally just me my mom and my Thea they had zero involvement in social media and marketing they were more of like my support in the kitchen so yeah. when it came to social media marketing yeah it was all me and the way that I dealt with that is I didn't <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do social yeah. media I didn't do marketing instead I formed relationships with people. Um, I did more of, you know, one to one-to-one -one interactions. I tell people, literally everyday people that I meet, I'm a very friendly person. Like I just did my own personal relations. And like a lot of times that's how it happens, like super random. Yeah. But the majority of my business right now is people I know who have been supporting me has just been like referrals. so awesome. Yeah. So people I know, and then from there I've gotten referrals. So that's the majority of my clientele. Okay. Like literally 90%, 95% people I know. 
and the other five percent are like oh my god people who have had parts of mm -hmm. Uh, the desserts that they've had, they're like, oh, I would like to place an order. Yeah. Um, even though I know social media is important, um, I just haven't been able to do that yet, or expand yeah. myself that far. But yeah. I'm working on it. I was going to say, I feel like where you are now, mm -hmm. this is working for you, and then slowly yeah. as you get bigger, then you're expanding that as my well. Fo my focus is customer service. So as long as I can keep that focus present in like all things I do in yeah. terms of like okay like I'm not trying to sell you my cookie like if you like cookies and you like the kind of cookie I make then hey I sell cookies and yeah. sometimes that's the best because that's when when you really establish a relationship with someone then mm -hmm. like they want to support you they want to come back and yes. then obviously the and your desserts will speak for itself yeah. and essentially it's it's about trust right yeah um you're gonna be putting something in your mouth that I make. <laughs> yeah. So it's like you're gonna trust me, right? So yeah, uh, the fact that you're trusting me, I take that as such a compliment. That yeah. you, and let alone it's gonna taste good. That's my surprise to you. Yeah. But you know, so it's a it's a I'm a baker, but I don't see it as me being a baker. I see it as like a one on one relationship with client to customer. Yeah. Because it is personal at the end of the day. Like, yeah. <laughs> you're eating something that I've made. It was like my expression of love and gratitude, and you're putting it yeah. in your mouth. <laughs> so, you kind of answered this in your previous response, I feel, but if there's anything else, what would you say distinguishes you from other bakers? What I think distinguishes me from other bakers um, is that not only that. Yeah, I'm a Cuban American baker, but there's other Cuban American bakers out there. Mm -hmm. um, True. Personally, for me, I don't have the time to market myself and take really fancy, beautiful looking pictures. Mm -hmm. So, for me, I think what's unique is that when you go to my page, you'll see that I have cookies that are just like there in a box or like I'll have my tres leches that is just there in a tin foil oh, they're natural and tab, pretty much. yeah like I'm not trying to do too much like that was just an order I placed and someone just picked it up and it tastes great like it'll speak for itself yeah um not to put down anyone who does photograph their desserts yeah. because there's an art to it as well like people eat with their with their eyes but I'm not in a position to advertise or market myself that way, even though it is good or successful. I'm just going on a different route, which is working yeah. for me as well. All natural here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you make me sound like a hippie. I shave, y'all. <laughs> All natural. We're over here, you know, living out in the woods. <laughs> touch on you know being a startup business what are some of the hardest things that you went through starting out some of the hardest things that I went through were probably relationships that I had with my friends because it's hard to explain to someone who you've known for so long that all of a sudden you have a quick chain like you know being a business owner it's not like hey I want to own a business yeah. like it comes with a lot of sacrifice of time um that not everyone understands because mm -hmm. not everyone That's wants true. that or sees the same value and sacrifice for certain things so i think the hardest part was like relationships i think it was coming from a good place from them but that was the biggest issue i had actually was uh friendships and relationships yeah. like trying to balance them because i had to sacrifice the little time that we did have in the pandemic or or post pandemic to reconnect I was like no I can't hang out because I'm doing stuff yeah um, and it's hard for people to understand and I get that but yeah that was it wasn't even business related really yeah. it was the sacrifice the time you have to give up the things that are fun but you have to take a little pause on them for a second yeah. sacrifice yeah. yeah yeah that's good so it seems like this is a lot of work, you know, you're doing it all by yourself. 
So what would you say inspires you to get up and do this? I mean, I know you mentioned mm -hmm. customers. Yeah. Um, so when I was unemployed and I wasn't doing my baking uh, like I am now, um, that was actually my thought in the morning, right? Like I'd wake up every morning like, what, what do I want to wake up to do every morning? And I was pursuing medical route for safety, which I love the medical route. And I'd be like, you know what? I want to be a doctor. But I wasn't waking up every morning wanting to be a doctor. Um, but I was totally at peace with waking up every morning baking for people. Mm. So I won with that. Yeah. And that's, again, where I'm at now. <laughs> it's like very simple, like yeah, everyday like, questions what? we ask ourselves. Yeah. Um, and just putting action to them. So what can we expect of Mila's Cuban Kitchen in the future? Um, I think you could definitely, if you go through my Instagram right now, you will just see random pictures of desserts that I've made, a display of my artwork that I can do with buttercream. Um, and you can expect in the next, let's say, before the end of this year, you can expect a website that'll be up and running where it'll have tabs of my menu, what you can buy, um, my catering menu, which is a bigger menu for parties and private events, and then how you can place those orders. I feel like you almost, you keep jumping ahead here. I was about to say, where can, if you want to tell people just a quick glimpse of what they can order now from you, where to mm -hmm. find you if they want to order now. Yeah, so right now it's very simple and basic. Um, I currently only have an Instagram account, and if you want to place an order, it's literally just a direct message that you'll be communicating with me. <laughs> I'm the person Hello. behind the logo. Um, and yeah, just be patient, and in the next few months, if you, know, you want to wait to place an order until there's a website, it'll be up hopefully by the end of the year. Um, if there's a, a specialty cake, like a custom cake, those take at least a month in advance because of all the detail and the prep for it. But all the small, the smaller orders, like the cookies, the pastelitos, the guava, um, the des leches, those are much like more short term, like two to three days in advance. <clears throat> They're much easier to make than a, yeah. designing a cake. Mm -hmm. And what's your, and we'll put it down below in the description, but what's your Instagram name? Is it just uh, The Instagram is Mima's Cuban Kitchen. Any last advice to our viewers who might be wanting to open up their own business? <laughs> the best advice I could give you is to uh, listen to that voice that you have that because you have several voices in your head, right? You <laughs> got the voice. The bad one. <laughs> yeah, don't listen to the one that's like a little meanie and says like, "Nah, you can't do it. Yeah. It's a waste of time." That's the voice you want to tell to like, be quiet. <laughs> All right, you want to listen to the voice that is creative, that is um, that 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 in Korea is encouraging, follows your passion. You want to you want to follow that voice as best as you can. And accept the fact that that voice isn't always going to be there, but know that that voice is very important to listen to and to follow. And it just takes one time for you to listen to that voice in your head to make a change. Oh, I'm inspired, man. I'm sorry, I'm going right now. I'm just <laughs> listening to these voices in my head. The <laughs> good voice I want to listen to. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. All right, so that's the fun part. <laughs> I mean, that was really fun, but you know, fun for us anyway. Oh, okay, you get to watch it. All right. All right. All right, we'll be right back. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have your pastelitos de guava, we have Cuban style flan, and also Cuban style tiramisu. Ooh. And I just say Cuban because the ingredients have been slightly altered to have a more Cuban, uh, all, yeah, all Cuban flavors to it. Yeah. Nice. So, the first one they're going for is the tiramisu. 
Okay, the top of that has chocolate shavings, it has cocoa mm -hmm. powder, <laughs> it has lady fingers, lady and fingered. it has a mascarpone, mm -hmm. and many few other things in it. Mm -hmm. How is it, ladies? Really good. Oh, and it has a, a nice uh, kick of I tasted rum. the rum. <laughs> yeah. I was like, but it's very soft and very, um, mm -hmm. well, not dry, yeah. yeah. That's really That's good. good, and you can taste the chocolate, which is a great balance. I actually really like tiramisu. I've had a bunch of tiramisu, which is like my time. Mm -hmm. and this one is up there. Yes, thank <laughs> you. I appreciate that. That means a lot. Mm -hmm. The flan. The flan. Yeah. Okay, so this it is a Cuban style flan because <laughs> your typical flan is more is very sweet. Um, I think the typical flan bought here in California is like a Mexican style. Mm -hmm. um, this is different just because the texture is not as custardy. It's a little thicker. <laughs> it's almost like a cheesecake. It is. It, yeah, it's thick. Um, and it's like that bitter. Yeah, and the, the bitter taste after. Yeah, it has a bitter little mm -hmm. aftertaste um, that comes from the syrup. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Cuban twist. <laughs> Last but not least is pastelitos de guava. All right. These are just your a simple puff pastry bought at any market, really, with some guava in the inside. Mm -hmm. I think for me, it's the ratio of guava to puff pastry, which I love about mine. Every bite, get some bread and get some guava. Mm. I like puff pastries. I'm a big fan of this one. Mm. Another disclosure: I love guava, mm. and the taste of the guava in here really tastes. Mm. Your explanation of my pastelito made me want to get one. <laughs> it just really tastes like like you're buying into a guava, but then the bread so like fluffy and has so much taste to it too. Mm -hmm. It's not just like, there's just a bunch of bread there. And I don't know if it's the egg you smear it on top, but mm -hmm. it almost feels like it's like buttery. Yeah, the top is like, the egg wash gives it a nice mm -hmm. color really and a little texture on top. Well, we have to wrap this up now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we'll finish these up behind the scenes, but you guys know where you guys can get your own tiramisu, flan, and pastelitos. I mean, Miss Cuban Kitchen and Tres Leches, we didn't try it. And my other favorite, chocolate chip cookies, man. Yes. Can't go wrong with those. Yes. Um, but I do want to give a huge, huge thank you thank to you. Maya for allowing us to come in here for creating these so we can sample these and just sharing her story and her knowledge with us so thank you so much maya for all your time thank you thank you ladies i appreciate your curiosity with my business that's awesome and your reviews of my designs yeah. <laughs> i'm glad you like them truly we love that but yes people nice meeting you all and maybe one day i can make you a dessert <laughs> nice and we'll put this information down below as well. So mm -hmm. thank you guys for watching as well. And, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Bye.